challenges. We'll get right into it here. Also, I have to see how my screen capture is. I think it's decent. Haven't streamed in a hot minute, so just making sure. Yeah, that's okay. All right, D4E6. Good luck. Frodim soon. Good luck to you. Hello to all our viewers, both on Twitch and YouTube. I see the uh, YouTube chat is quite active. Hello, Jeff, Carol, Charlie, Zach, John Stevenson, Mark. How's everyone's weekend going? Okay, I'm very familiar with this position. Played this a million times. Yeah, Knight C6, you see this fairly often. Um, let's actually play A3 against that. I just don't want this Knight to come to B4. Preparing for my, my Bishop to come to D3. Queen C2 thereafter. Hello, Belgian Novice. Also, due to Symmetry. Hello, Muhammad. Also, George's. Or George. PP the best. <laughs> Hello. Shout out to all our Lee Chess mods. Lopare, no joke. If you guys happen to be out there, greetings. Sorry I had to miss last week, guys. Yeah, I was unable to do Lee Chess plays. I've been a little under the weather the past week. Uh, mostly my voice. I've been suffering from a sore throat and just, I think, some inflamed vocal cords. Probably due to all the streaming and content creation coaching I've been doing the past couple months. I think it caught up with me. So if I have to cut Lee Chess plays short today, that, that'll be why. Um, I'll see how I feel, though. But yeah, just know that it's been about a week since I've done any serious streaming and talking at length. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, you know, when you put the bishop here on d3, bishop takes f6, and then queen h7, uh, queen h5 attacking h7 and d5 can be a thing. Okay, here, um, I think I'll just keep developing knight e2. Rated or not, you can challenge to casual or rated up to you. As long as it's 3-0, that's the only stipulation. Okay, now this knight is looking kind of cut off from civilization. It does have the c4 square still to work with, but I'm going to keep an eye on that knight. What factors are you considering in going for GM? Well, I'm not actively going for Grandmaster right now, so I would say mostly none. <laughs> but I have weighed the factors in the past. If there's anything specifically you want to know, be happy to try to answer. Yeah, now here I think I'm going to take because I get knight takes d5 in. Oh, win the queen. Hey, what's up, Lopari? Good to see you. I just gave you a shout out, so I'm glad you're in the chat. What's up, Jay Kona? Yeah, you know, I'm feeling decent today. Um, I just mentioned if I have to cut the stream short, maybe I'll plan for an hour or something if, if I were to cut it short. But for now, we'll try to go the whole two hours. Hello, Ricardo. This is a classic situation that can happen in this line. This knight takes d5 discovery. That's why the c file is like generally a no-go for the black queen in this type of situation. Hey, Mood Lopez. Also, Helton and Richard Beasley. Okay, Frody, thank you for the game. So, I think your setup was a little bit off. This is not terrible, but I would not recommend putting the knight on c6 here because it's better to have a pawn on c6 supporting uh, the fellow pawn on d5. Makes it a little more solid. I think you somewhat started to go astray when you later put the pawn on c6, but your knight was a bit adrift on, C on uh, a5. Probably this was the real culprit, and then overlooking this tactical idea. 
might not be too late to try to get this knight back in the game, like knight c4, and try to get it here. That's actually a pretty good square for the knight, the d6 square. So, all right, thanks for the game. Smolzik, let's play e4. Good luck to you. Hey, thank you, Handles. I appreciate it. Hello, North Carolina. Dan, y'all play knight c3? I used to play this line a lot against the French. Is it conceivable that you will try for GM considering how busy you are? If I try for GM, I would almost certainly try to take a bunch of time off, a big chunk of time off, and give it a proper shot, probably in the sixth, sixth month to one year range. But I don't at all see, see myself doing that anytime soon. <laughs> Not completely ruling it out, but yeah, it just doesn't fit my uh, lifestyle and work commitments at the moment. Especially Lee Chess plays, you know, the most important commitment of all. <laughs> uh, not YouTuber says, after a long time watching Lee Chess plays, how are you, John? You had some voice issues. Yes. Yeah, still grappling with that, but I'm getting better. Getting better. So happy to be here. Hit this rook. Also, rook f8. Bishop h6 may be coming in. Could even throw in bishop g5 first, but I think bishop h6 is probably the way. Thank you, TX mate. Good afternoon, IB. If you were a GM, would you still do Lee chess plays or would you abandon us? Ooh, and this is a fateful move. Tries to defend the rook, but it's going to run into this. Of course, I would continue to do Lee chess plays, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. I do very much look forward to Lee Chess plays every week. I can't claim I'll be able to do it forever. You know, there will almost certainly come a time where, um, you know, whether it's Lee Chess wanting to branch out to other Lee Chess play streamers, which I'm totally cool with, or it just doesn't work for my schedule, we'd have to switch things up. But um, fortunately, for the moment, none of that is uh, relevant. Do you know Andras Toth? I do know I am Andras Toth, yes. Yeah. Cool guy. Haven't met him in person or anything, but followed his streams, um, interacted with him on Twitter, seen his chessable courses. He's a great content creator, an author, coach. <laughs> Someone just wrote a message in the in the Twitch chat that was a totally innocent message, but <laughs> they misspelled an important word and the auto mod caught it. <laughs> um Yeah, I I was watching a little bit of the American Cup. The format seems kind of interesting. Yeah, the knockout format. <laughs> Low par. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Smoljik, for the game. So you ran a foul on the dark squares in this one. So when you're playing this winnower variation, bishop b4, do be careful about the dark squares because those can really hurt, especially around your king. Okay, so like here, you'd want to play g6, or I think king f8 might be... Actually, even more appropriate. Try to keep this pawn on a dark square a little bit. Yeah. Uh, actually, in this position, knight c6 is not the main move. I think knight e7 and queen c7 are significantly more popular. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, queen a5. This is a line I remember Grandmaster Yuri Shulman used to play this a lot. I think I played a game against him in this line. So knight c6, although it's a natural move, I think it does experience some issues against queen g4, whereas, say you play knight e7 here, queen g4, you can castle, defend this pawn, because if this, your knight can come here or here to hold. Probably here. Hit the bishop, 
defend g7. So I'd, I'd say look into this juncture a little bit more, Smoljik, if you're playing this line. All right, thank you for the game. Abdul Rahman, good luck to you. Taylor says, as a singer, I can certainly empathize with you on the vocal front. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because when I was Googling, like trying to figure out what was wrong with my voice, which was probably a bad idea to Google that stuff, uh, I was looking at a, like a lot of Reddit posts on uh, the singing forum, like our singing with lots of people talking about how they've lost their voice due to various things. <laughs> And as singers, especially, how they plan to get it back. Mostly, you need to let it rest. Okay. Um, this feels a little dangerous for that knight over there. Let's go here. Hmm. So I can take here. Probably should. Yeah, then I'll trade queens, and I'll go after that pawn. Assuming white takes c5. Did you damage your vocal cords, or just a gnarly cold? Yeah, I think I, um, I think I damaged my vocal cords temporarily. Not from shouting or anything, but just from, like, talking too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I think at one time or another, we probably all lost our voice. Um, you know, I was down in New Orleans about a year and a half ago for my brother's bachelor party. And we went to a really loud bar. And I lost my voice there just from like thinking I was talking normally, but I was actually like semi shouting for multiple hours. But it wasn't like that. It was just more of like my day to day coaching, streaming led to it. And it's a little bit of a hard problem to find a solution to or find information about because it's not like that common. Um, as in most people like in their day-to-day -day lives like don't have to talk that much. So the advice out there is kind of mixed and hard to find. Mostly you just need to rest it though. Okay, defend here. If castle's queenside, I can take this. All right, this position looks tremendous. How are we going to play it? I think... I think I'll play e3. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind, Hakabas. Uh, let's just develop. Uh, okay, so now castle's queenside, and this could be a threat. Let's think. Play e5. Maybe I actually want to force white to give up the dark square bishop. Let's do that. Haha. <laughs> What's going on in the American Cup today? I saw Hikaru won his match against uh, Sam Sevian. The always strong Sam Sevian. Wow, I might be able to set up the pawn diamond here. Oh, really? No shortcuts. That's very interesting. You also went to New Orleans for a bachelor party, says Nick. Was fun, but after two days, ready to get out of there. <laughs> so in other words, kind of like Vegas. There we go, pawn diamond. And if knight e4, the other pawn comes up to f5. Look at that. Look at this configuration. <laughs> this is actually a pretty funny situation. <laughs> that knight is trapped. And I got f6 covered. Love it. 
Oh, there's a diamond emote? That's cool. Scoop that up. I almost don't want to take that pawn. <laughs> because it looks kind of cool, just like nested right in between these pawns. But yeah, we'll take. You can get the pawn diamond out of the Scandinavian sometimes. Yeah, now obviously we can't disturb this pawn diamond. If I play e4, there's queen takes. Time is getting low, so let's go here. There's a check here, but I don't think it does much. Pre-move this. Preserve the discoveries. Should I set the diamond in motion? Let's do it. Oh boy, look at this. Those pawns win the day. Yes, thank you for the game, Abdul Rahman. So I think you probably ran into my pawns a little bit too quickly in this line. So I kind of feel like the position after d4 might be playable for you, but probably you got to go like knight a4 here. Yeah. Knight a4. Oh, the engine says you're doing fine at that point. So possibly these pawns are overextended, but all the way back to b1 looked a little bit passive. I thought here you had to take to try to keep it kind of close. Thanks for the game, though. Interesting one. Okay, red, green. Um, Let's play knight f3 here. <laughs> UFO pickup says, when will you become FM? <clears throat> now you're asking the real questions. When will you become FM? Climbing down the rating ladder. Do you use a humidifier in these long, cold, dry winters? I do not, but I may have to in the future. Um, someone recommended I use a steamer as well, like a facial st steamer. So I think there's some value to that if you're having consistent voice issues. Um, okay, let's go here. Maybe C5 coming up. Hmm. Now this is gradually getting opened up. Let's think. See a few different tempting moves here. Let's take here. And then thinking about moving this knight, maybe knight e5. Idea possibly queen b5. Control these squares. Give a check. Yeah, also a good point, blob 17. Definitely a good idea. To think about okay that didn't didn't yield me much but <laughs> let's see what I can do here hmm I'm trying to land this but it doesn't work 97 can confirm that it does not work work now? Might work now. Mm. Kind of have to go for that. I could try to play d4 or b4, but I'm not hugely taken by that. Hello, Tia and Khan. Hmm. 
Let's go here. Queen d2 might also be decent, but I'm willing to allow some fracturing of the pawns to try to simplify a little bit. Hey, don't move and you see it. Good to see you. No pun intended. <laughs> Let's take here. Sometimes a poison pawn, but after this trade, there's no bishop takes h2, fortunately. So I think my opponent has lost the threat a little bit over the past few moves. Still have to be careful, though. But I'm managing to stabilize. And now we offer the queen trade. We bully our opponent with the potential queen trade. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll go here. Keep the knight on board. Pun not intended, but pun appreciated. That's right. Yeah, thanks for join joining Defuser. I'm just going to double. Have I been to Switzerland? I have not, but I would love to go. That would be amazing. Would love to visit Switzerland. Okay, now I'm going to attempt to put some pawns on dark squares against this bishop. Could even go here now. Let's play this first, though. So transforming the structure a little bit. Try to play against this guy. Oh, I got to hurry up. Mm, check. Take. Don't blunder the queen. Very important. Okay, let's just go here. Check. And we'll go here. And then if I can secure the knight, I have a mating net. All right. Need to have the knight defended, though. Play for the flag. <laughs> Always go for the flag. Don't try to checkmate in those situations. <laughs> Good game, Red Green. That was close. I couldn't pull off the mate. You knew what I was up to. You played H5. So I didn't see how to pull off the mate. Let's see... Let's see if there was a direct win. I mean, it's plus 10, but I didn't see an actual force checkmate. I think you defended pretty well. Good game. Now, yeah, you were probably better out of the opening because this whole, like, C takes D5, Knight E5 thing didn't really yield me anything. Hmm. This is plus 1. It wants me to go D4. D4. Yeah, I wasn't too happy with this, though. Queen a5. Queen a5 is what I should do. Try to take here. That was kind of disgusting. And that was a rated game, yeah. I had to protect my rating. <laughs> no, good game. Interesting, tough one. You had an 89% accuracy. I had a 94, apparently. That doesn't seem accurate, but <laughs> we'll go with it. All right, thanks for the game. Porifera. How's it going? This is our fifth game against one another. Good luck to you. Are you there, poor Pharaoh? Knock, knock. Okay, I think we'll have to abort. On to the next game. Quello Esperto. Good luck, 1767.
How many games do you play approximately in one stream? Usually about 18 to 20 seems to be the range. 18, 19, I'd say, mostly. Go for a little Fianchetto here. Maybe some like uh, Leningrad slash Clarendon Court opening action. If knight c3, I might snap that knight off. You never know. Yeah, let's do it. I'm familiar with this from the Jinji Indian. How many of you guys would play this system for, uh, for black? If it looks weird, just wait. I might convince you to play it. You give your opponent these pawns. You're kind of relying on the position remaining closed in the center, at least. Let's go here now. What is the name of this opening? Uh, the move order I used, I'm not sure, but it's basically the Jinji Indian. Where you, you quickly fianchetto this bishop and you're willing to trade it for the knight on c3. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> How often have you seen this maneuver? <laughs> that might be a new one to me. <laughs> knight. Kingside knight to b1. You love it. You love to see it. Yeah, it's also known as the beef eater. That is correct. Now, how's White going to unwind this, especially this knight? Uh, I can castle on either wing. Thinking castle short, maybe, in this case. Let's go for it. I mean, I would think rook c1, trying to unburden this knight. But I can always... Um, shift gears and attack this pawn at some stage. Let me think how I want to do this. It doesn't do much. Um, there's 94, but this pawn's kind of loose, so I don't like that. Let's just go here for now. So long-term, we're definitely liking the... Uh, better pawn structure and playing against white's weak pawns. Hey, thank you, Nath. I appreciate that. Thank you for watching over the years. Knight a3. Hmm. Okay, let's just challenge this bishop. White wants to keep it. Fine. That is acceptable. Mm. Let's go here. There's a lot of possibilities, so it's kind of hard to choose. But I'll play this one to start. Is it the Benko? It is not the Benko, no. Although it does involve c5. But the Benko, you're playing b5 early on. By the way, did you guys know that Lee Chess just announced that they um, dropped the minimum rating to 400 from 600? They just announced that the other day. So I think it's been rolled out for the past few days. I'll bring this back now. I don't know if minimum rating is the right term. Maybe Lopare can mention it or link to a blog post about it. I think the default starting rating is still 1,500. But... Uh, yeah, I believe the minimum is now like four or six hundred. Uh, four hundred from six hundred. All right, still increasing the pressure here. Strategically. Mm hmm. Hmm. I 
can take this now if I want. Hey, John, this is Guys. Let's do it. Oh, I think someone subscribed to my channel. <laughs> my alerts are on. That's funny. I just heard the notification. All right, now let's come back here. Mm -hmm. Take. It's going to be a time scramble, folks. Wow, Quello is fast. I'm very lucky that wasn't stalemate. I think we were both looking for a move for White to play here. Fortunately, White can play E5. <laughs> Otherwise, that would have been stalemate. <laughs> yeah, good game. I think you put up decent resistance. The position seemed a little tough for you, but maybe it's not so bad. Mm. Yeah, the engine gives a big advantage to black. It's the type of thing like in a classical game. You'd probably be suffering for many, many moves. But I think you sought your chances reasonably well here. I thought you were going to play knight takes a7. Yeah, let's see what this opening is called, shall we? Queen's pawn game, modern defense. That's not very descriptive. <laughs> Queen's pawn game, modern defense. Like catch-all catch -all name for g6. Thank you, LDS Awesome, for the raid. Four viewers come, or three, three viewers coming in. Thank you. Welcome to Lee Chess Plays. Yeah, so basically, I was playing by analogy with this line, which is the Jinji Indian or the Beef Eater prof, proper, where you trade the Fiancatoed Bishop here, and then you play F5. You clamp this E4 square, and you play against these pawns. Very interesting line. Thank you, Pesca, uh, or Peshka, sorry. Peshka for the 26 viewer raid. Appreciate it. I know you're a frequent player and streamer on Lee Chess. Thank you very much. Hope you had a great stream. Anyone can challenge me to 3 plus 0 blitz. Casual or rated, up to you. Apoplectic. This is our first game against one another. Let's do it. Good luck. Thank you, Peshka. Thanks again. Hope you're doing well. I see you're gaining a lot of rating lately. Well done. Oh. Take back. All right. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Watch those long-range diagonals. I'm glad you saw it right after you played it, though. <laughs> That's all right. Apoplectic. He just won the Elite Bullet Arena with 180... Plus points. Wow. Amazing. Congrats. Now, I'm still going to look for opportunities along this uh, couple of diagonals here. Along these diagonals. Rook B1. So I think my opponent is indicating with that move that they're going to try to move this knight and offer a trade. They're going to try to offer a trade for their bishop on B2. Hey, Elijah says, I'm taking the Jinji Indian course on chessable, but haven't tried it in practice because I feel like I also need to know the King's Indian in and out in case White doesn't go into that. Is that right? Um, I would say that's not completely accurate. You can try to avoid the King's Indian if you open with D4G6, but there are some King's Indian E type lines. That is true. But you can avoid a pure King's Indian if you want. Okay, let's go here. Why did you name yourself Bartholomew? <laughs> well, I can't say it was my choice, but um, I like the name. 
This is a typical tactical idea, by the way. Now, question is, do I actually have mate if I take here? I think this might be good, guys. This might be good. Now, I could scoop the rook, but this looks more fun. So let's do this, and then I'm going to pre-move this move for the shock and awe factor. Now, if takes, I get to link up with my light square bishop. That's the point. White could go here. I didn't calculate that fully. Uh, we'll look at that afterwards. Now, which way should I take on f3? Let's see. Both are good. Um, I think this leads to mate, actually, pretty easily. Yeah, let's take this way, and then take d1, which conveniently guards c2 as well. Yes, there is the St. Bartholomew. That is correct. Who I think died a pretty grisly death. And then checkmate with the pawn. Thanks for the game, Apoplectic. So, the way that you set up your position was a little bit funky. Not a big fan of it. Um, maybe the, the queenside fianchetto kind of threw you off a little bit with this bishop pointed over here. I would say you should probably take the center, like d4. Start taking that space on offer, even if you're playing the English, which honestly would not be my first choice for your rating level. Uh, I think it's a, a bit sophisticated. Yeah, some of these maneuvers like knight d5, your knight is not really supported here. Let's see, though. Um, this position actually wants me to go knight e5 to guard this square. That did cross my mind briefly, but couldn't resist this one. I think your only move is to go here. King d3. Now, look at this evaluation. Interesting. Apparently, d5 is the only good move for me. I can tell you right now, I would never play d5 here. <laughs> I'm just going to be totally honest. I don't think I would ever play that move. I don't know that I would even think about d5 because there's multiple attackers here. Maybe in a classical game, I could reason my way to this. How is d5 so good? It's a good question, defuser. I'm going to guess the idea is you're trying to take and open this file towards the king. And white can't take here, I don't think, because of this check. And you're doing this all while the knight is hanging. Apparently, I take here, and that's good. <laughs> that's, yeah, it could have got complicated after king d3. But instead here, this leads to checkmate, yeah. Okay, thanks for the game, Apple. GG. Just the check, just the check, please. Good luck to you. Let's let's also play in English in this one. Go G3. Mm, Bishop G2. Yeah, it shows 50 challenges up here, guys. There are more than 50, but if you did challenge, your challenge is included in here. And it's completely random. Thanks to everyone watching today. 133 viewers on YouTube. How many we got on Twitch? Let's check. Nice. Almost 300 on Twitch. Appreciate it, everyone. Hmm. Okay. This is a very common mistake. Remember this configuration? Two minor pieces with one square in between them along a rank? They are prone to a pawn fork. Prone to a pawn fork. Yeah, if you play this line of the English, you'll get this at some point. Probably many times. Oh, my pleasure. Cannot be doing that. Thank you for tuning in. By the way, do you guys know that the uh, World Championship match starts on April 7th? 
Today is March 19th. It starts on April 7th. <laughs> Raise your hand if you knew that. It's pretty crazy. Might be the least typed world championship ever. Okay, let's castle. Was c4 unprotected? Um, well, if black takes on c4, I would take the bishop here. So I'm, I'm gaining time to play d5. That was kind of my point. But they could have attempted to take it, yeah. Uh, knowing that they would lose a piece eventually. Okay, let's go here now. This is a threat, so we'll put a stop to that. Yeah, you know, Magnus, the uh, the cloud of Magnus not playing is going to hang over the head of the, the match, unfortunately. Even though Ding and Nepo are incredibly strong and fully deserving of having got to where they're at. But without Magnus in the mix, just a tough sell, you know? From an, an excitement standpoint. Let's go here. Maybe work the night up. This pawn is a beast. Notice that black really can't take the knight down here because um, there's back rank issues like queening. Lord Cannon says, I think Nepo will win. I'm kind of with you. I think Nepo is a slight favorite. But saying slight favorite for a world championship match like isn't really much of a risk. Uh, I should probably put like a percentage on it. I think he's like a 60-40 favorite. Which is more than the ratings suggest because they're basically like neck and neck in rating. But I do think Nepo's recent form, I mean, you, you guys might recall, he won the candidates last year decisively. Like clearly the best player in the candidates last year. And his match experience against Magnus should should be worth something. Haven't seen much from Ding recently to be excited about. But then again, he always seems to surprise, you know? Like, I think he's very capable of demonstrating his top-level chess, like, when it matters. So, of course, we have to afford him um, a large chance to win as well. Okay, thank you, Just the Check, for the game. Let's see how many people have wandered into that same position. This is not to, you know, rub it in or anything, but this this position here, not found in the Masters database, but I bet in the Lee Chess database, we're going to find thousands of games. Look at this. Move my camera. Whoa. Move my webcam for a second. 60, that's what the sigma means here. Over 60,000 games to reach this position. On Lee Chess. And D4 wins a piece. Only played in a third of these games. So two-thirds of the players playing white here did not play the correct move. A lot of them played B3, which defends the pawn, but... <laughs> yeah, D4 clearly, clearly better. Yeah. So do uh, keep that one in mind. You can castle bishop g4, I think, is kind of interesting as well. Okay, thanks for the game. Okay, drag 542. Good luck to you. Let's play d4. Let me move my webcam so it's not floating in the center of the board. <laughs> okay, let's play knight f3. Good luck to my opponent. Um, how about a Catalan? Let's go Catalan style here. 
Have I played Nepo? Good question. I don't think I played Nepo, no. Maybe I played him on chess.com, like in a Blitz arena. He used to stream a little bit. You guys remember that? He used to have a Twitch channel that he streamed on. I don't think he streamed for quite a while. Um, if he has, he streamed um, Hearthstone. Or Hearthstone, however you say it. Hearthstone? Or Dota. He likes Dota too, right? He's apparently like a very strong Dota player. But no, I don't think I've actually played Nepo, which is a shame. I have played Ding, though. I have a video on my YouTube channel, my personal channel, where I played Ding in the Pro Chess League. Oh, maybe, maybe it's Fiddler who likes uh, Hearthstone. Maybe they both do, but I know Fiddler is into that. John, can you explain to me how I lost a time scramble on Lee Chess a few weeks ago where I had a bishop and a pawn, and my opponent only had a knight? If anything, I should have won. So you had a bishop and a pawn, your opponent had a knight. So on Lee Chess, if your opponent has any mating material, if there's any possible checkmate in the position even if they have just a lone piece. You can literally set up a checkmate. doesn't matter the sequence. Uh, that counts as a win. So that's how you lost that time scramble, if you lost on time. Okay, my opponent's a little bit cramped here. Maybe 95. Let's do it. Hello, Penn Mason. Ding and Nepo will play Hearthstone as tiebreak for the world championship. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Bring on the tiebreak. Okay, so Black's digging in here. I think they're doing a decent job. Let's take and go here. This kind of reminds me of a Scandinavian, but with a really bad light square bishop for Black. Mm-hmm. To play C5 or not to play C5? That's that's a key question in these situations. You know what I also can try to do? Mm, no, nah, that's not a good idea. I was going to try to bait them into taking here. And then bishop E3, but I think there's takes down here. But maybe I can somehow... Uh, Somehow induce that in a different way. Like maybe this? I don't know. <laughs> Defend this rook a little more? I revealed my intentions. My opponent's not going to fall for it. Oh no, my pawn. John, is that iced tea? This is uh, iced coffee, actually. Yeah, iced coffee. Okay, so this is kind of what I was hoping for, that my opponent would open the position. Should be a little bit better for me with the two bishops here. They're, they're pretty strong. The iced tea of coffees. Go here. We're just grinding this position. Nothing special. I will not be trading queens. Shocking, I know. We're not going to make it that easy on black. I just want to work into the position now somehow. Like here, maybe? Okay. Let's go... Go here. Oh, yeah. I think they were thinking if I go here, then queen f6. But that's why I played the bishop back to keep an eye on the square. That was tough drag. Like these positions are kind of difficult in practice. It's sometimes from the side with the two bishops standpoint, like not easy to increase the pressure, but you can see the engine just 
loves this type of thing for white. Thanks for the game, though. Uh, this setup you chose, I think if you're going to play this way, you should probably try to fiend keto the uh, light square bishop at some stage or try to break out like this. I think this position is, is known. I think I've actually played this position from the white side. Some games here you can find. Probably in the Masters and Lee Chess database. Yeah. So you want to try to take some measures to get this light square bishop into the game, whether it's by playing e5 and getting it out that way, or maybe b6, bishop b7, although that can be hard to achieve. you got to constantly watch this guy. Thank you for the game, though. Very much appreciate it. Maneuver, good luck to you. I like the way you maneuver. What's up, Basid? How do I feel about the Latvian? The Latvian Gambit? Well, I think it's pretty terrible, but <laughs> I don't have such strong feelings as like Kristoff Selecki on the Latvian, for instance. He really hates it. Like he it almost like personally offends him for some reason that people play the Latvian. <laughs> what do you think of the England? I think the England is even worse than the Latvian. Probably far worse. I think the England is is a losing gambit. Ooh. Maneuver do not take. They're gonna lose a rook. Yeah. So e5, black just played that without checking the number of attackers and defenders on d8. This is going to be a completely tied down situation for black. Really can't move hardly anything here. If you move this knight, you lose the rook. If you move this knight, you get mated. This bishop's pinned. <laughs> Yeah, that was looking rough. Um, so that's why in this type of position, I think they usually try to play b5 and try to get going on the queen side. This is a nice setup for white to play, though. Shades of the Yugoslav attack. You can play bishop h6, h4, h5. A lot of times, like let's say b5, white might even throw this move in. And tuck the knight here, possibly to c1 if needed, and then focus on trying to attack on the king side. All right, thanks for the game. Oh, yes, watch that e5 move. I'm at new. Good luck to you. Yeah, 150 attack. That's right. That is correct. Mm, okay, we'll go here. Proper Dutch. Stonewall. Stonewall, even. Hello, Fant. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, that's great to hear. Love to hear that I helped get you into chess. Definitely stick around. It's an awesome game. As I'm sure you're well aware. <laughs> Okay, let's play, let's take, and then we'll go here. So I've traded the dark square bishops. That's usually a positive thing in this opening. <laughs> Thank you, Piper. Yeah, my camera does block the material count. That is correct. I want to get you guys used to uh, counting the material for yourself. Very important. Have I ever visited Latvia? I have not. I have not, but I'd love to go. Okay, so we're both just maneuvering. In this opening, you see both sides maneuvering for these squares oftentimes.
yeah, Black's playing well here. I agree. Pretty interesting position. Look for me to play F3 at some points. Try to challenge the center. I think I'll do it now, even. Hello, Shandin. Take this way. Angle for E5. So whose outpost is better? That's a key question. Who has the superior outpost? I also have this outpost I can maybe use. Ooh, okay. Now this is instructive. I'm going to take here. And then we're going to take this one and then jump the knight in. Or I guess I can do this first. And I should have like a perma good knight versus this bishop, which I'm not going to say it's a bad bishop, but probably a little less effective than my knight. A lot less effective. Let's take here. Assuming F pawn takes. Then gain time for this. All right, we're looking good. All right, but this hits this. Um, maybe queen f2? Guard here, some ideas on these squares. Monster knight, that's what we hope, yes. Ooh, I, I probably had knight g4 as well. I probably should have looked at that. Do I own any expensive chess sets? Um, I have some nice wood sets, yeah. That I really like. Nothing too crazy, but you know. 100, 200 USD maybe. I'm looking for a mate here, guys. Not seeing one. This black would have to go here. Check here. Seems like there should be something, but yeah, I'm not quite seeing it. Knight f7. Hmm. Where is my checkmate? Not seeing it. I'm going to I'm going to go here nonetheless. I do think there's many good moves there, but maybe not a mate specifically. Queen f6, yep, maybe. Maybe queen f6 would have been decent. There was queen takes e3 against that, but I guess you could argue probably black's king is too exposed. I think the time is going to be the biggest factor, unfortunately. Black has to go queen g7 here. Otherwise, yeah, this is going to be mate. Thanks for the game. That that position, after all those trades go down, which is a pretty typical sequence, by the way, tough for black to play. Very tough for black to play. I think for all intents and purposes, this is winning for white. Yeah, knight g4 in this position is good. So let's see how it could have gone here. Queen f4, c takes d5. I guess the point here is to try to threaten this, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, there's no immediate win. Just some infiltration or something. Okay, thanks for the game. Tough one. Tough one. I think you played all right. Probably around here. Things started going astray, though. Uh, yeah, maybe knight d7. Because that does lead to the situation where, long term, it's the good knight versus the, the less effective bishop. So that, that's a strategic theme you do have to watch out for. Yes, I am playing against viewers. That is correct. Feel free to challenge me. Ooh, I got a 97% on that game. That is the type of position I love to play, like these strategic, you know, square battles. But I think the engine's being a little kind to me there. Okay, Rob Jobs, good luck to you. Let's play, let's play B3. How do I learn to judge the quality of a position? 
It's a broad question. That's going to come down to experience and assimilating um, strategic knowledge over time. Along with possibly, you know, knowledge of dynamics and specific operations, tactics. Okay, I think my opponent's not here, so let's go on to the next game. What's up, Shady? Shady Igbaria. Good luck to you. Mm, Shady might not be here as well. We'll keep rolling. Chess two three A. Okay, let's play. Let's play G three. Will the real Shady Igbaria please stand up? Yes. <laughs> okay, another one of these openings. Um, hmm. I don't know. Let's go C four. Good luck to my opponent. Go here. Creates a little bit of pressure, you know. Hmm. Go here. I'm again going to try to put a rook on c1 opposite this queen on c c7. See how it goes. A little x-ray. I know you've probably heard of him, but have you played against FM or NM Elliot Neff? He's the one that organizes my OTB tournaments. You live in Sioux Falls. Uh, I know of him, but I've never met him in person. But yes, I do know who he is. Have I played Kamsky? Yes, I have, actually. I played him online, but I also played him at the Reykjavik Open, I think back in 2018 which is like almost exactly five years ago today. My phone reminded me of that, that I was in Iceland five years ago. So yeah, I played, I played Gata there. He beat me in a pretty instructive bishop ending. So that was pretty cool to play a legendary player. Gata Komsky. Let's go here. Hit the bishop. I got some nice pressure going on here. A lot of pressure. If a rook comes here, knight c6 is killer. Too much. Do I like money? <laughs> you know? It's okay. I mean, I wish we weren't so dependent on it, but what's the alternative? Okay, so I'm up a bunch of pawns here. I'm also up an exchange, I guess. Just try to trade stuff off. What's up, Keith? Oh, no worries. We're just hanging out. Um, yeah, I got a couple issues here and here. I guess I'll just try to trade this off. I gotta give one of those pawns, I guess. Oh, no, I can go here. I do have this move. Take, take, check. Bishop f1. Oh, we got a big raid. 129 viewers coming from Tosh Queen's channel. Thank you very much, Tosh Queen. Massive raid. Thank you so much. I hope you had a great stream. Uh, I am International Master John Bartholomew. This is Lee Chess Plays, where I play viewers for two hours in 3 plus 0 Blitz. We're on the last hour here. Just getting into it. So yeah, feel free to hang out. My voice has been a little weird lately, so I do apologize for that in advance. But yeah, feel free to send me a challenge. My username is Fins, F-I-N-S, Fins. All right, let's start pushing some pawns, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I think we've raided Tosh Queen's channel before. She streams pretty frequently on Lee Chess, as far as I know. John, are you the owner of Chessable? I am not. I am a co-founder of Chessable uh, with David Cramley, who was the CEO of Chessable for many years. But Chessable was sold to the Play Magnus Group and then to Chess.com more recently. So I'm still somewhat involved as a content creator and um, course author, but I am not the owner, no. When are we going for the GM title? Ah, yes. One of the more frequently asked questions. <laughs> so much so that it's been asked multiple times today. Nah, let's not even bother with that move. Let's just take... Uh, I don't have any plans to try to go for GM anytime soon. But you never know. I'm not ruling it out. Thank you, Chess23A. Appreciate it. So... I think you're kind of in trouble again, like one of the games we played earlier in the stream, putting the queen on c7 when this rook is coming over to c1, that's that's a dangerous situation. I wouldn't recommend uh, chilling in that situation for too long. So already h6 like might be the decisive mistake. Now, I was thinking here, you could try to throw in bishop takes c3, but I don't think it even works. For one thing, I could just take with the rook take here, queen takes, and white will not be denied. I will still win a pawn out of this. Maybe you could go here and try to go after this, but it's not ideal. Uh, so in general, be careful when this arises. Like You probably need to think about moves like queen b6 here and get off the file. Okay, thanks for the game. Mennonite, you're up next. I feel like you're always at 2,000 Mennonite. Is that true? You just keep your rating... Affixed at 2,000? <laughs> if so, 1999 would be even better. As we say on this channel, it's better to be a strong 1,900 than a weak 2,000. Who is your favorite 20th century player? Yours is Tall. Ooh. Yeah, Mikhail Tall is... Pretty good argument for that era. So many great players, though. I mean, for me, I'd say Capablanca and Karpov, two guys I learned a lot from. But I do like tall, Tall's games as well. If you're talking 19th century players, I would definitely say Morphe. Morphe was just a beast. Hello, John. How difficult was it reaching the I am title? Um, hello, Andre, by the way. Good to see you, Andre. How difficult was it to reach the I am title? You know, I was pretty young when I was pursuing I am and started getting my norms, like 18 to 20 years old, I think is when I made all my norms for I am. So it didn't seem that difficult at the time because I was already pretty good and just the momentum of playing a lot kind of carried me. But... I think if I were pursuing it as an adult from a lower rating level, it would, it would definitely be tough. But I feel like scoring IM norms is significantly easier than scoring GM norms, like by many magnitudes. So although still impressive, um, I think you, it's possible to get to IM by like inertia and playing a lot uh, being of a certain age and doing so, whereas GM like really requires a lot of actual study and like reflection on your games much more. I don't want to minimize like becoming an IM, but I do think it's it's a much easier task than GM, even more so than it appears on paper with the rating difference. Hmm. Okay, let's go here. I like this position a lot. Kind of King's Indian style. This is an old Indian defense. Maybe I'll keep knights on board. 
Looks nice. We got some nice squares to work with here. Yeah, maybe bishop here. Now, if this knight comes back, I can go for a fork. It's kind of cool. Yeah, and that one too. I have a fork here. Let's think. Yeah, I think that works because if takes here, I take here. Hits the, hits the queen. I feel like Daniel Naroditsky would be proud of me for this. I think he would be happy and approve of the way I'm playing. Yeah, let's just take. Come here. Maybe f5 will be played. I'll just drop this back. Up the exchange, looking really good. Hmm. D5 is interesting. Opens this up. Let's play that. I like the look of that. It's really nice. Converges on this square, too. Hit the, hit the rook as well. And then this is brutal. Bishop f2, bishop takes d4. Ugh. <laughs> this is nice. Pin here. And if take, I win the rook. Just got to be a little careful on the dark squares after that. But Thanks for the game, Mennonite. Uh, yeah, I think this situation in the middle game is just pretty nice for black. Because if you, if you don't get b4 in pretty soon, like maybe you should play it here. If you don't get that in pretty quickly, I feel like it's easy to run out of ideas. Which is kind of what happened, it seems. Yeah, A4, so that we get a nice grip here. The computer is not like that impressed yet. It doesn't say white has to panic. But it felt like it drifted away from white. Hmm. Yeah, somewhere in this region, apparently you lost the thread. G4 it's recommending. And then swing the knight up here. Okay. Yeah, G4 gains some space. Kick the knight back. Thanks for the game. Tamara Bernert. Good luck to you. Am I the CEO of Lee Chess? No, I am not. Absolutely not. I don't think Lee Chess has a CEO. In fact, I think they would be very much like against a corporate structure for a nonprofit. I could be wrong, though. Uh, Tebow is the founder of Lee Chess. Shout out to Tebow. But I don't think he would consider himself CEO. How are you playing on LeeChess.org Twitch? Through the magic of the internet. Yeah. They've asked me to stream on their Twitch channel. <laughs> okay, we're playing a Nimzo Indian here. It's the standard stuff. We're also on the, the uh, Lee Chess YouTube channel too, by the way. We're simultaneously broadcasting. Okay, now if White Castle's here, I think I can go knight e4. I think this is a good move. Take, take. And we're on the bishop. If White takes me back, I'll scoop here and... I feel like I should be a little bit better now because these pawns are kind of weak. The C pawns in particular. When were you inducted into the Minnesota Chess Hall of Fame? I think I was inducted in 2017. 2017 or 2018. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, let's go here. Oh no, my pawn. Because I'm going to go f6 and claim that the knight is trapped. That'll be the claim. Yeah, this is a pretty ideal end game for black. I'm getting my king closer. Note that we don't care about having our king in the center, safety-wise, because the queens are off the board, and the position is very safe. 
it's it's advantageous in fact to have this so i'm looking for this let's attack the uh pawn further Something's got to give here for White. What is Minnesota Hall of Fame? Uh, so Minnesota is the state that I live in in the U.S. And they have like a um, Hall of Fame for notable players, coaches, people involved in the chess community. Um, okay, let's go G5. Lots of pressure here. Looking nice. Hey, thank you, Brian. It's been a little taxing today. You might notice I'm not as, uh, I don't know, exuberant. Is that the right word? <laughs> I don't know if exuberant is the right word in this case, but maybe not as animated. Still kind of recovering, but I'm happy to be here. Okay, so we're up a very solid pawn at this point. What to do now? How to break through. I mean, I could play d5, but I'm kind of thinking I can wait on that. Hmm, let's go a5. I don't know if this move is even necessary. Probably not because this isn't a threat, but I, I want this pawn to stay here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I think I'm going to do this. Try to get through. What made me decide to take c4 with the bishop instead of the knight? It was a close call. I don't know that one was clearly better than the other, to be honest. I liked my knight, the potential of the knight over here. If I took with the bishop or did this, I feel like white can just stay off the light squares, and although my bishop will be strong, I didn't like that as much. Knights are just trickier, right? So we like our knights. Thank you, Taylor. Very disciplined on time. I did get into a couple time scrambles, but yeah, it's been better today. Yeah, so instructive. What do you guys think is going to be the evaluation here? Let me pull this up so we don't see it if someone's running the analysis. This position right here, what do you guys think is the computer evaluation? And then I'll tell you what I think. And then we'll look at what the computer thinks. Hmm. Lots of opinions. Plus 0.2 from Set Landon. That's that's a bold statement that white is better here. It's an interesting question. I'm thinking. I'm thinking this is probably like a minus one. Minus one. That might be overstating it, but these positions are really tough to play. Maybe a four, a five, but I, I'm thinking black's probably about a minus one favorite there. Wow. We overestimated it. Set Landon was closest. <laughs> no, actually, some people said zero, right? Tilki said draw. Set Landon was right on. <laughs> That's actually pretty surprising. I would, I would take black here every time. Maybe I was convincing enough that you guys believed me. I don't know. I just, I hate these pawns. Like, it just feels they're going to come under attack at some point. It probably depends on white trying to get rid of these weaknesses or transforming these. Because I bet if we go forward a little bit, yeah, it's already starting to trend away from white. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Like, these moves didn't look that impressive. Now it's already minus two. But the initial position, according to the engine, is not at all bad for white. Yeah, exactly, Andre. 
Huh, interesting. I'd be curious if you gave this to like 100 GMs, how they would assess it. Okay, thanks for the game, Tamara. I would maybe remember that 94 idea in the future because that can hurt you. Okay, Haredos, good luck to you. Seven, a strong 1700, the strongest 1700. You love to see it. Yes, good luck. Be right back finding 100 GMs. I thought about this a while back. How cool would it be to have a website where you could train like strategic positions? Positions of the type that we just looked at, where the engine is not just going to like spit out an easily digestible answer. And you could actually um, like get a sample of opinions at various rating levels. Like you could see what players at your rating level think about the position. Um, it could be like multiple choice style. You could see what masters think about it. And it's like crowdsourced over time where people give their honest assessments of a position. It could be like a cool training idea. Okay, this is known to be losing for black. This is the Greco Gambit. I've taught a lot of my students to play this line from the white side. This is a very bad line for black. Taking with the knight and then bishop takes. Um, I think I can take here first. And we'll take here. On the knight on a5. Create it. Yeah, maybe I will sometime. That'd be cool. Hmm. Let's go here. Sensing a Spanish coming up. Oh, sorry to disappoint you. It was the Italian game. <laughs> the Italian... 95. This move looks fun. I'm going to play it without calculating it much. Take check here. Completely unnecessary and probably unsound. I could also like take back. If I check here, there's queen f6, which may not be best. There's also this check. Um, What else? I don't know. Let's give this check. Maybe here. Just get all the pieces working. We care very little for material in this in this situation. <laughs> mm hmm. Take. Because that king is so open. Check here, here. Here comes to mind too. Let's give it a check. Mm-hmm. Yeah, black has to take, otherwise it's mate soon. Now I have check here, check here. This one wins a rook. This one, black can play bishop e6. So I guess we'll go for the rook. The win of the rook. Okay, thank you for the game, Horados. Yeah, definitely look into this theory. If you play this line, you got to know this theory. In this position, bishop takes f6 is the best move. The way you played... Gets played all the time at the amateur level, but Black's in big trouble after Queen B3. Probably pretty much losing. I think, you, I think D5 is the best move here, but it's not good. Not the greatest. So look into Bishop F6. Okay, thanks for the game. Freddy Yu. Hmm, first game against one another. From Denmark. Good luck. Mm, let's play e6. Yeah, I think that attack that I played was a little unsound. 
in that last game, but the position was so overwhelming. Thanks to my opponent for uh, watching and challenging, by the way. This is the triangle setup that I'm playing. Mm, bishop f5. Let's go here. Attack this. Okay, now I'm pretty happy to do this. The structure tends to work out well. So long as we stop this move. Let's play the knight in here. What's your favorite opening? Definitely the Scandinavian defense. Oh, yeah. I like the classical Sicilian a lot, too. Classical Sicil is pretty cool. I still have a fair amount of coffee left. I've been rationing this coffee pretty well. Okay, e4 is interesting. I was looking at that. Question, can I play this move here? I actually don't see why not, so I'm going to do it. Mm, okay, there might be one remedy for white. I don't know. It's complicated. If I took here, I guess bishop takes a6 was the idea. It might also be fine for me, but this looks interesting, so we'll do it. Yeah, we have a lot of challenges, over 50. And it's completely random, so whenever you challenge, um, you're just put in a pool of players waiting to play. And there's no priority given. Rookie one, f5. Hmm. Let's go bishop e7. I'm up a pawn now. This is nice. d4 is weak. English opening's decent. I wouldn't advise uh, amateur players necessarily to play the English, but it's definitely a pretty good opening. I think to play English, it's good to have some d4 experience from the white side. My personal belief. I'll just go here. Block this bishop. Here. Or this. I'll go here. Put some pawns on light squares against this bishop. Seems nice. Yeah, this is tough for white because they're down a pawn and their structure is also worse. The bishop's pretty ineffective. So lots of pawns on light squares restrict their bishop. Important principle. You guys are asking a lot of opening questions right now. Sorry, I can't give an opinion about everyone's opening repertoire. Okay, I'm feeling a mating net brewing here. I'm feeling a mating net. I don't think White's going to let me do it, but it would be cool. Let's 
take this now. Mm-hmm. Check here, here. Go for the pin. Nice way to swap down. Pawns are too much. The split pawns. All right. Thank you, Fred A, for the game. Let's take a look at the key moment when, in my opinion, the key moment when I played knight before. I think you should take my bishop here. I think you should actually take. Here, check. Here, take. Now, you might have calculated this position as I did and thought that I was going to get out here, but you have this move knight d2. Right? Knight d2, defending. And if you can win this knight, well, then you have two minor pieces. We'll see what the engine thinks. Yeah, this is better for white. So is that the way to go? Yeah, it does not like knight b4 for that reason. Mm -hmm. And only that reason. Note, everything else is good for black. So sometimes when you're calculating, you have to make tough calls like that, where if you don't go into the sharp but critical variation, you're worse. So I can kind of see why... E takes F5, according to the computer, is the only way to go. Yeah, that's it. And I guess you can play like bishop d3, king e2. Bishop d3 guards the square. Get the rook to attack the knight. Nice. Oh, that was you, semi Fred. Yeah, thanks for the game. Interesting one. All right, Zach, 28 28. Let's do it. Play B3, the Nimzo Larson. The Rosen Treacher Gambit. What is that? I think I've heard of that Gambit before, but I can't remember what it is. Wow, look at that offer by Seth Landon. It says, I'll give patron wings to the first challenger who wins. Guys, that's. um. It's a cool thing to do just for supporting Leeches, getting the patron wings, supporting the site. Do you mean lifetime, Set Landon? <laughs> can you gift people wings? I think you can. I think you can. Very cool offer. Hey, Robert. No, no one has taken me down today. Had a couple close calls, but I'm still waiting on um, the real takedown. That line doesn't work out so well for me. So let's just develop. Could have maybe taken with the bishop, but... We'll just develop here. Okay. Never play F6. Could be trouble for Zach. I'll just go back. Defend. John, how is it possible that once I manage to get a win against you, I can't get a game? <laughs> can't ask me. You got to ask the algorithm. I don't make the rules. Mm, let's expand in the center. E5. Do I fear the BDG, the Black Mar Demar Gambit? I have a pretty good answer to that one. So I would say no, I don't fear it. <laughs> I play the, uh, what's it called? 
Uh, it's called the Lemberger Counter Gambit. Look that up. Lemberger Counter Gambit. So Black plays a quick E5 against the BDG. Okay, yeah, this is a threatening move. We need to be careful. Ideas of Knight F4. Maybe Rook takes there in some cases. Let's think. I mean, I could play this. That's a safe move, but it loses the pawn back, so I'd prefer to avoid it if I can. Maybe h3 first? Let's go h3. True. I do have two central pawns. That is correct. No, oh, thank you, Dan the Meek. You don't actually play chess, but enjoy the commentary. I've ran into a few people like that, so I appreciate it. Okay, get a couple defenders here. I like this. This queen is almost trapped. Looking grim. Bishop here, knight here. Let's just expand. We'll go here. Now if knight comes in, e7. Too much pressure. Too many pawns. Okay, thank you, Zach, for the game. Yeah, so this is all theory. I think you should take here in this position, if I recall. Yep, D takes C4. Personally, I don't really like to put the pawn on E5 against the Nimzo Larson because I think that plays into their hands. That's what they want. So I would maybe advise against that, but it is fine. It is a main line. Thanks for the game. Tough once these pawns get rolling and you were down the pawn. Yeah. This was instructive right here, guys, because knight takes e5 is what I was originally going to play. But I don't know how great it is, because here, this hits this and this. Looks like a blunder, right? Bishop takes g7. Normally would be winning the rook. But we got to watch out for loose pieces and pawns of our own. This is a double attack. Engine says this is dead equal. That's why I didn't go for that. So you got to extend the variation. Got to look a little bit deeper. Um, interesting, we're actually following a game here where black played knight b4. Game in 2007 that ended in a draw. Cool. Thanks for the game. Georg. Jeej. Good luck to you. Are you there? Yes, you are. Okay, let's play e6. I've really been mixing it up against d4 today. Yeah, we'll play this. We're going to the Dutch. The Lemberger counter gambit sounds cheesy. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, I think it is a cheesy line. So if knight c3, I'll probably play this bishop here. Oftentimes, black fianchettos the queenside bishop too. d6, bishop b7. I have a student or two who plays this line for black. Pretty, pretty robust variation. I think now I'll give a check. Nah, let's actually wait one more move. takes hmm i don't know about that trade because that seems to help me i get the bishop pair i wasn't attacking the bishop so it doesn't look like it was necessary i'm 
All right. Hmm. I don't know. I'm thinking about getting aggressive here. Let's play d6, first of all. Maybe I'll do this, castle this way. Pawn storm, especially if white goes short. Hmm, d5. Okay, this pawn is hanging, but I may not take it. I think I'm just going to go here. Just lock up the center. It's okay. Be a six. Stop this. John, what do you think? Does blitz actually help to improve in longer time controls? I would say mostly probably not. I've always felt like someone's blitz strength is more a function of their existing ability at longer time controls, you know? So I I usually don't advocate trying to like specifically improve blitz. I think it comes naturally. Things like time management, maybe you can work to improve for blitz. I know I attempt to. <laughs> but uh I think it's mostly gonna flow from playing longer games and and really embracing improvement at those time controls. Ooh, and what did I tell you guys about the pattern? The two minor pieces with one square in between along the same rank, susceptible to a fork. Very much susceptible to a fork. Okay, so we're up a piece here for two pawns. Very nice situation. Start rotating these pieces over to the king side. More than likely. Okay, yeah, this is a good idea, trying to use this square. Let's go here. Dispute. Mm, there is knight f5 maybe in this position. Could have been interesting. Let's play g6. I just want to stop any incursion into this square. Bl block the bishop and queen too. Take. I think I have a nice solution to this. Take. And then here. Hit the queen. And hit f2 as well. Go after this pawn. Ambush. The full pin. And checkmate. All right, thank you for the game. Yes, White did play very well, especially for their rating. Yeah, ran into that fork. But I think even after that, for a brief moment, like maybe knight f5 here was something. Let's see. Mm, engine points out a nice reply. Queen g6, actually, going on the same diagonal. Idea of take here, take here. So, yeah, I think this this did the, the lion's share of the damage. The position already probably is kind of nice for black with the two bishops and the space. So I, I would advise against trading your bishop for the knight on f6 willingly like that, uh, Gayage, because I'm not attacking your bishop. Wasn't necessary. Hey, what's up, Yuho? Thank you for tuning in. Subbing to the Lee Chess Twitch channel. Always appreciated. Hope you're doing well. Hope you've been well. Okay. We're down the home stretch here, guys. Let's get in a few more games. So if you're just tuning in, this is Lee Chess Plays. I and other streamers um, throughout the week. Usually like one to three times per week, it seems do a, um, a stream where we play viewers in Blitz in 3 plus 0. I think Sabina, 
Women's Grandmaster Sabina Foyser also plays bullet against people. I've never done bullet streams for viewers, but maybe we'll do that in the future too. So check out other Lee Chess Play streams during the week. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. Anyone can challenge. It's completely free, as always. Everything on Lee Chess is free. Okay, this is all theory. We were talking about this line earlier. Uh, I think h4 might be the way to go here. Try to start motoring with the h-pawn. Maybe some 15 plus 10. <laughs> we might have to extend the stream length to do that. You know, I'd be in favor of it. I like 15 plus 10. Someone was asking about bishop h6. So importantly, bishop h6 can be met by knight f5 or knight g6. Yeah, it's a tempting move. But knight f5 is a good answer, hitting the bishop, guarding g7. Okay, f6. Hmm. I mean, I can take g6. That's probably good. Let's do it. I mean, I don't think this is theory. But you never know. F5. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, shall I take on H7? Probably. Take, give the check. And then quickly try to get my knight in. Oh. Yeah, you got to take that bishop. Got to try to get the bishop for it. Because now we got the mate. The mating pattern. Hello, Frozen Cloud, asking about the Danish Gambit. I'm not too familiar with the Danish Gambit, I gotta say. I don't think it's been refuted, but I think Black has passed to equality fairly easily. All right, thank you, Polar, for the game. Yeah, we can look in the database here. So we're on well-trodden territory. So Black usually does not play Knight G6 here. Usually they're playing this, which is interesting. Yeah, again, unconcerned about this because you have knight g6 at this point. Note knight f5 would be met by bishop takes f5, but knight g6 is also sufficient to defend. You can cover that, no problem. So we've had a couple games in the French Winter War today. There are long-lasting implications to trading the dark square bishop for the knight, so you might want to look into that. Okay, thanks for the game. Uh, let's try to get like two or three games in before we end the stream. Beckett's Murphy, good luck to you. Play e4. Oh, there we go. Scandy. You love to see it. Scandy player. Ah, playing an aggressive line. Okay. The Portuguese variation. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't want to play something solid here. I, I respect. I respect the Portuguese variation. <laughs> a lot of times black castles this way in this variation hey Robert yeah I haven't been posting on YouTube the past week and a half or so I've been having some vocal issues I think I'm still kind of recovering but yes look for that in the future for sure Mm -hmm. Let's go here. Just developing. Yes, there is a Portuguese variation of the Scandinavian defense. That is correct. I'm really going full on geography lesson here. So this is the Portuguese variation, bishop g4. It's very interesting if white plays f3, bishop f5, c4, but I don't think white has to get involved in those lines whatsoever. Completely unnecessary. Mm 
The Vikings made it all over, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they made it down to Portugal, the Vikings. I'd say pretty likely. They went a lot of places in Europe, pretty deep into the continent, into Asia as well. How long have I been streaming? Almost two hours. We're at about um, an hour and 50 minutes at the moment. This is an interesting position. A lot of tension here, folks. Let's play like this. Go after the king. Yes, also to North America. That is true. Mm hmm. Okay, so now this and then converging on h2 is the threat. So I think probably taking here is correct. I'm looking at this idea too, folks. So I'm figuring out if I can pull that off somehow. What the move order would be. H3 takes. Knight takes d6. Rook takes. Knight e5, maybe. That would be real interesting. I don't know what's going on there. I really don't. I kind of want to play it, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if I trust it. I don't really trust it. But I want to play it. <laughs> you know that You know that feeling? Let's do it. You know the motto on Lee Chess Plays? Yeah, and then my opponent didn't even take it. Okay, let's go here. H3 was not necessary, but I want to get at this queen here at some point. Oh yeah, 95 right here would have been good, I think. I missed that that was possible. Shout out to Beckett's Murphy for being a Lee Chess patron. Thank you very much, Beckett's. I'm trying to delay this decision, Andre. I'm thinking I might have some potential if I do, but I'm not sure. It takes... Um, let me consider. Let's take here. And now, here. Cover all these squares. Oh, this is possible. Didn't actually see that. All right, let's go here. And then here. Got to defend mate. Oh, that's actually a big mistake by me, I think. Uh, yeah, it probably is. <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe not. Hold up. Wait a second. Take this one. No. Oh, man. I think I'm losing. <laughs> GG. Nice one, Beckett's. Yeah, Rook H6. All of a sudden, I can't stop Maiden. Nice one. <laughs> it's made in two. I have a spite check. That's all I can do. GG. I didn't see that nuance that uh, you can actually play it right here. That's really nice. You know, if I'm going to lose to an opening, I'm glad it was the Scandinavian. <laughs> well played. Yeah, this was an interesting game. It showed a lot of attacking themes in this opening. So apparently this is good for white, but it's very complicated. 
And 95 is not the move I should take right away. I should capture because 95 black found this move, which is a good reply. Yeah, and I missed rook h6. You know, at first I was actually scared of this one, but that would lose to the puzzle rush tactic here. We all know that one. Or the puzzle storm tactic. <laughs> so, well, well done. That's um, the appeal of this variation. If you can get opposite side castling, it can get very sharp. I think, uh, where was it saying rook takes c6 was interesting. That's an interesting observation. I'm not sure that this would occur to me so naturally that this is good. Apparently the damage to the king, though, maybe eventually setting up here is strong. So congrats to Beckett's Murphy. Only one to take me down today. Let that be a lesson to you guys. It's very much possible. <laughs> okay, now to compound my potential problems, let's play the blindfold game. Last game of the session. So this is a tradition here for me on Lee Chess Plays. Trying to play with outside of the board. This is not a glitch. This is a setting that you can use on Lee Chess if you want. Good luck to Belho, Belho Med. Let's see how we can do. Hello, Tommy. Good luck to my opponent. They're playing the Jobava London. Let's go um, A6. Yeah, board is bugged. <laughs> if you want to see the board, you can follow me on Lee Chess. You can go follow Fins. F-I-N-S. Okay, mm we'll keep this bishop. Keep it on board. Go for c5. I like playing this way. It's nice that this is covered too. Takes the sting out of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, knight e5. Or knight c6 challenging the knight on e5. White castling this direction is a little unusual that early. <clears throat> a lot of times in the Jobava London, they try to keep open the option of castling long. Okay, rookie one. Hmm. Let's play bishop d6. Develop and attack this here. In Jobava London, the engine immediately says it's equal after move three. Yeah, it doesn't like the Jobava London a lot of times. Many variations. It doesn't trust white setup. But for a human, pretty hard to navigate it from the black side a lot of times. Okay, maybe we have some potential here. Pre move this. Ooh, it takes, but that loses a piece. I can take here. No defense of this point. Hey, what's up, no joke? I haven't seen you in the chat today. Thanks for the link. Yeah, no joke dropping the, the link in case you want to watch this game. Pick off the knight, and then I'm going to play knight e4 next. I'm not sure what White's thinking about because this is pretty much the only logical move. <clears throat> Could also play e5, I guess, after White takes. Let's do that, e5. And you know what I'm going to try to do is sneak the queen up here and go for um, some problems on h2. Hmm. Okay, now we'll go here. 
big time issues for white. Hmm. Let's bring this in. Many good moves at this point. But we'll bring that in. And I think this is just going to be mate. Made in two. I think this is made, this is made, and this is made. Let's mate with the knight. All right. Thank you for the game, Belho. GG. Yeah. So this was your big mistake. D takes on C5, losing the knight. But I think this position's already a little sketchy for you. Computer says take here and then take on... Ah, now take C5. Uh-huh. A little bit better for black. Yeah. So, interesting opening, fun opening. But you might want to think about your move order a little more. Like E3 first. And then if this happens, you can, you can try to play like this. This is a possible way of going. Keeping open the options of going long with your king. The way you played it, although you developed quickly and castled short, I don't think you have a lot to show for... Your knight blocking your C-pawn, for instance. That's not a great long-term situation. Yeah. How on earth are you playing blind? Been playing chess for a month, and this is the most ridiculous and a good way thing I've seen. Yeah, you know, most masters can play blindfold chess. So if you really want to see something impressive, look on YouTube. Look up um, Andrew Tang or Daniel Narditsky playing blindfold. Andrew Tang, Daniel Narditsky blindfold especially blindfold bullet. Those guys are absolute monsters. They can play one minute or even 30 second games blindfolded. There's some examples that, of that you'll find. But yeah, after a while, you develop a map of the board in your head. And it's not that much extra effort to play blindfold unless the game gets, gets complicated or you're playing someone quite good. Or if you're playing multiple games, blindfold, simuls. <laughs> Yeah, take a look at those those videos, guys. Okay, thanks so much, guys. Yeah, sorry I was a little uh, lower energy than usual today. Still kind of recovering a little bit, but I felt pretty good. I think that went well. Um, congratulations to Beckett's Murphy, the only player to defeat me today and in the last um, few streams that I've done. So congratulations to Beckett's from Germany. Very well done. Got me in a Scandi of all uh, variations. Yeah, and you can see this was the, uh, or you can see. Here, let me, let me go to my preferences. This is how you do it. So it's under preferences and then display. You can do blindfold chess and visible pieces, yes or no. I'll do no. I'll go back to my profile. <clears throat> this is the so-called... Portuguese variation. Knight f6, this is the modern Scandinavian. And then bishop g4, Portuguese, which I think it'll say here. Portuguese gambit. Yeesh. Look at my average centipon loss on this one. It's not good when you're in the triple digits average centipon loss. Have any of you guys ever had a uh, four digit average centipon loss? Is that possible? I don't think I've ever seen that in the wild, but I would be interested to know. <laughs> 125 is not good. That's <laughs> I would lose my, uh, my rating real fast if that was a regular thing. Hayden says, four-digit average centipon loss is impossible. Vince Vance says 1,900 average centipon loss. Let me check this out. I got to check out this link. What is this? How did you have that link handy? Look at this. We just answered our question. So whoever said it's impossible, that is not true. Let me move my camera. What is this game? 
PP Pampers. <laughs> nice reference. Versus Josic 8. 97 blunders, but no inaccuracies or mistakes. It's pretty clean. Versus 98 blunders. A 1936 average centipon loss versus 1940. 2% accuracy. Oh, wow. Oh, I see. So basically, both sides had checkmate on F2 or an F7 for a million moves. So the engine's just constantly like dinging them, like wrong, 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 majorly wrong. <laughs> what is this game? <laughs> if we can even call it a game. How many moves is this? 102 moves before white mated. Well, there you go. That's uh, one of the higher, if not the highest average centi pawn losses you can achieve. Let me know for next time. Can someone achieve one that's higher than that? Yeah. And average centipon loss is, uh, you, can, you can read about it. I think Leech has, has an explanation. But basically, it's a measure of how much any given move, on average, like deviates from uh, what the computer recommends in terms of hundredths of a pawn. So centipon, hundredths of a pawn. Look at the graph. Good idea. <laughs> look at this. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Talk about heart palpitations. It's a real strong uh, heartbeat here. <laughs> This, this is the so-called razor blade graph. <laughs> wow. Who was that who had this link handy? That was impressive that you, you had this, you must have had this bookmarked, Vince Vance. Thanks for dropping that in the chat. So if you guys want to check that out, here, maybe I can post it to, um, the YouTube as well, in case the YouTube viewers want to take a look. Okay, thanks so much, guys. This was a lot of fun. I'm going to sign off. Congratulations to Beckett's Murphy. Thanks to everyone for challenging and hanging out today. We're going to raid I Am Slaggy. Thank you, No Joke Chess. Thank you to the mods. You all have a good week. I'll see you again soon. Pretty sure that's the recording of an earthquake. Yeah, exactly. It's the seismic activity of this game. <laughs> all right, see you guys. Bye.